Hello viewers, this is Wolf here. Welcome to Wolf's Haven and to another unboxing and review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nendoroid Amaterasu DX version from Okami. Now, I love Okami, and I also wanted a companion figure to go along with my Shiranui statue from First for Figures that I've unboxed before, and I felt like this was the right one to go with. So, with all that said, let's jump into this and take a look at what we have here. So, of course, we're going to take a look at the box. We have our Amaterasu right here, along with the various other accessories that come with it. If we scan over to the back, we're going to take a look at the various weapons. So we have um, the various different weapon types we get, such as the Sumugari Glaive here. We have the Devout Beads Rosary, and the Divine Retribution Solar Reflector right here on the back. So, some decent stuff that comes with it. The box is also very cutesy as well. We have a couple of different pictures of Amaterasu in some poses, especially here, looking pretty cute. I kind of like the cutesy aesthetic here of the Nendoroid of this. So let's open this up and take a look at this model. So this is going to be everything that comes included with this Nendoroid package here. So if we just take a look, we're going to have our various weapons and accessories such as the Solar Reflector right here. We also have the Sumagari Glaive and the Devout Beads right here. We also have a turnip, which I, I believe that's supposed to be a turnip. We also have a swappable head for Amaterasu right here. So of course this head has its mouth open, so I guess you could pose the, the turnip inside there. We also have the figure of Amaterasu right here. And we also have this little figure of Isun right there as well. This also comes with a bunch of additional leg pieces here that you can swap in and out um, for the front legs and the hind legs as well. So you definitely get some interesting customizability here with this package for sure. So taking a look at the model of Amaterasu here, of course this is a very clean looking design here with the Nendoroid. They definitely went with a very chibi looking aesthetic for Amaterasu. Very cutesy, very small, uh, with a very big head as well. So definitely if you're into that cutesy, chibi aesthetic, this is a very nice model to go with as well. Uh, I like how clean a lot of the colors are. A lot of these reds look very good on here, along with a lot of the blacks for some of the defined features like the eyes, the mouth line, and like the little lining for the wings on the, on, on the legs and also on the tail. That little paintbrush aesthetic here on the tail does look pretty nice. I actually do kind of like how there is a little bit of a color gradient here on the tail where this white transitions slowly into a gray and then out into that black tip. So it kind of looks like a paintbrush um, tip there, which I think that's actually kind of cool. It's a very small detail that I really appreciate there. The other thing that's kind of cool is at the very bottom uh, of the paw pads, we have very detailed paw pads here. All these little black parts for the toe beans there looking very good. Of course, we have these little squiggly lines on the bottom of the leg. And yeah, quite a bit of detail on this for sure. I do really like the aesthetic on this. It is very cutesy and yeah, I think it does suit Amaterasu here. So taking a look at some articulation here with this Nendoroid, we'll work our way from the head all the way to the back. So starting with the head, the head is actually going to get some pretty good rotational action here. You actually have a full 360 degree with the head. You can kind of make Amaterasu look like she is completely possessed there, which is interesting. For some upward and downward movement, so the head can look down about that far, so that's pretty good, and then it will look up about that high as well. So we definitely get some really interesting uh, posability here. The posability is pretty good, and there's also a little bit of nodding action, some up and down nodding that you can get to ever so slightly perfect that head position that you really want. So definitely some good posability from the head. There's also this piece of the mane here which moves independently of the head so you can kind of affix this to whatever position you want once you get the head in place. So that's good. Looking to the legs, the legs actually have full 360 degree motion. You can completely rotate these legs around. You can also remove these legs here like that. You can remove them pretty easily. They sit on a peg in there, so you have that good 360 degree motion here, so some good posability. The wings on the legs can also be removed off of the legs as well, so 
Definitely a lot of stuff you can do with this. The hind legs are going to be the exact same as the front legs, so you can get some full 360 degree action here. So this is going to be a very highly poseable figure, which is nice. And then onto the final part, the tail. The tail has some decent movement here, so you can see like wagging it from side to side. The tail is going to move about that far to the side and that far that way as well. There's a bit of up and down action as well here, that high and then that low. And then of course there's a bit of rotational action here, right? So you can completely rotate this around. So a very highly posable figure in every respect here. Everything moves pretty much in a full 360 and there's a lot of stuff that you can attain with the posability here. So definitely not bad here with this Nendoroid. So just taking a look at the various accessories and weapons that come included with this. So the solar reflector looks very nice. I love the detail that they put into the flames here. The flames are a translucent design here. So they are going to catch light a little bit and get a little bit of a glowing effect here, especially in these deep oranges here at the tips of the flame tails looking really good. Then we get those bright, very shiny portions of the yellow flame right there. The design of the actual reflector here looks very good. It's just a solid green. It's kind of a metallic-y green there too, which does look good. So definitely do like it's a very clean design. Of course, it's going to have a peg right there, which on Amaterasu's model, there is, of course, a point right there where you can just mount those these pieces in. So not too bad. So, taking a look at the Sumagari Glaive here, much like the rest of the model, this is going to be a very clean design. We're going to have two colors, this dark blue, which envelops the entirety of the blade itself, and then we're going to have these yellows for this little cloudy effect here around the handle and hilt of the blade, especially in this little open section of the blade here. There are a few minute details here, not a whole lot, but some such as this engraving here around the handle of the blade here looking pretty interesting as well as just the details like the swirls of the clouds do look do look kind of nice i do like that and then these little details around the blade as well and then on the back here of course this is going to be our little open section where we're going to mount a peg in there so that that sits on amaterasu's body there so a pretty clean looking design for the sumagari glaive so taking a look at the devout beads here these are probably my favorite weapons that come included with this pack, as well as my favorite weapons from the game as well. These do look very nice visually as well with these bright yellows all around these beads here. We also have these blue tomoe around here that contrast the yellow very nicely. And we also have a bit of this color gradient where this yellow is going to transition into this bright orange at the very tips of these beads here. So these are definitely some really nice looking beads and I'm definitely looking forward to mounting this on Amaterasu as well. It seems like there is an indent right here which I believe this is going to lock into Amaterasu once we affix this around the neck. So yeah, these do look very nice, much like the other accessories as well. So just looking at the turnip, not really too much to say here. The colors are pretty clean, we have the green for the leaves and then there is a bit of a color gradient where this the white portion of the turnip does kind of turn into a pinkish at the at these parts here. This is always a weird design where these turnips kind of look like they have legs, but yeah, this is pretty much the turnip here. It does have a mount here, which this is going to mount into the mouth, so I'll definitely check that out a little bit later. If we take a look to these additional accessory pieces here, such as the expressive face and the turnip, I'm going to demonstrate swapping these in and out. So, if we take a look at the expressive face here with the mouth open, looking at the back, there is going to be a little shape here where the peg from the main body is going to sit right into there. So, for swapping those pieces out, it's going to be a pretty simple process. You just pull the head right off, and be careful because the main will probably drop. If we look here, this is of course going to be our shaped peg, and this actually sits on a ball in the main body, so that's how you achieve a lot of your really good posability with the head there. But Obviously, for mounting this in, you're just going to fit that into the peg, and it's a pretty easy process there. Pr um, not too much of a struggle there at all. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that you mount the main into the back of the head when you swap this out, but just for demonstration purposes, we're going to swap them out like that. So, I'm actually pretty happy that it, that it comes included with an additional face here. Um, just for the fact that, yeah, you can add that little extra bit of emotion to Amaterasu here. But the other function here is that you can actually stick a turnip in there. So, we just remove the 
head real quick. So to get the turnip in there, you can't do it with the tongue in the in the mouth right there. So what you got to do is if you look right at the back of the head, there is this little circular part right here where you have to actually pop the tongue out with that. You might need a little tool to kind of pop that out because it might be difficult to do it with your hands, but just like that, you can see that you can pop the tongue right out of the mouth and then that's going to be a little mounting spot. That little mounting spot that we looked at earlier for the turnip is going to sit right in the mouth there. So if we just put it in like that. Of course, we're going to have Amaterasu with the turnip in its mouth. You can see that that peg sits right in the hole right there and it's going to sit pretty securely in the mouth. The one thing I kind of like is how the teeth are a little bit defined there on the roof of the mouth there, so it does kind of look like Amaterasu is biting into the turnip, which I do like, but that does look pretty cute there. And yeah, definitely some um, a nice additional option to the posability and the visual features of this Nendoroid here, so I do think that this is pretty cool. So here, just quickly taking a look at the variety of legs that we have here, we definitely have a good amount of legs here to really get some expressive poses out of Amaterasu. So we have these hind legs here where these legs are completely coiled in, so that could be something as if Amaterasu is sitting down or maybe lying down or something. We also have these other four legs where these ones are the straightest of all of the legs, especially compared to the default, since the default d does have a little bit of a kink in it to make it kind of look like it's walking or something or in a walking animation. So this is completely straight here if you want Amaterasu to stand proud or something like that. And then we have these four legs, which these are coiled in. So this could be like Amaterasu's springing forward, like leaping forward or in a, like in a running animation or something like that. So we definitely have a very good variety of legs here to really get some interesting and dynamic poses with this Nendoroid here. So the final accessory here is going to be Isun. So we have this little plastic sphere here which contains Isun inside. Green in color, it does look nice. Isun is mainly just a little silhouette in the middle here and kind of gives it the effect that he's kind of sitting in the middle of this as well. So just a little bit of a silhouette of Isun here which does look nice. I imagine that once we get this mounted on an Amaterasu this is gonna look very good as well. I do kind of like how this is hollow, so there is going to be a little bit of a glowing effect once light passes through it as well. So this is a nice piece as well to go along with the other accessories. So here we're going to take a look at the stand and the two other accessories that come with it. So this is of course going to be a three piece setup here. So this is the stand base and of course it's a very small stand base. We have various different mounting spots so you can pose the figures wherever you want. And then the other two pieces, this arm is going to be used for Amaterasu. So this arm has seems to have some interesting movements. So you can, of course, move it all the way back like that. You can coil it in all the way. And then these little mounting spots can also move as well. So both of these two parts are going to move like that. So it seems like we're going to get some decent action, posability action with this mount for Amaterasu. And then this mount here is going to be for Isun, of course. I already have Isun mounted into here, so that little peg sits into this part here. So you can pose Isun kind of jumping around. And of course, just like the other part, it's going to have a bunch of different move movable spots. So of course, this point is going to move in and out and completely coil in, as well as Isun's mount, which will have the same movement in and out. It'll coil all the way in. And yeah, this is going to mount directly into the base here. So we definitely get some interesting posability here. Of course, with this mounted in, you can see it mounts in pretty easily, and then you can have Isun just floating up in the air like that. So we definitely get Amaterasu up here in just a moment. So, with Amaterasu here mounted up on the stand, with Isun set up alongside it, I definitely do think that there is a good variety of stuff that you can achieve with this whole setup here. I actually do really like these Nendoroid stands, since their functionality seems to allow for some really 
interesting and dynamic poses and very expressive poses as well here. The stands seem to be pretty good at holding up the weight of a lot of these figures. I don't imagine that they weigh very much because they're pretty small, but the stand does do a pretty good job of like holding it up in various different angles, which is really nice. And yeah, it does. It definitely does seem that you can achieve some really nice poses with this, along with this Amaterasu figure and the various accessories, attachments, and weapons that come with this. Like, I definitely do think that it's going to look nice and very expressive in a variety of different ways that you can set it up. On top of that too, I also have the solar reflector mounted into the body. So when it comes to mounting in the other weapons, the solar reflector is actually the one that comes with the attachment peg, which you can just simply pull out and then mount that into the other weapons. So, of course, if you have a preference for either the Divine Retribution or the Sumagari Blade or even the Devout Beads, you can definitely swap them in and out pretty easily if you so wish and then get Amaterasu in your favorite pose. So I definitely do like this whole setup and the stand is very nice as well. That about does it for everything in regards to the Nendoroid Amaterasu DX version. Now for my final thoughts. Big things really do come in small packages and this Nendoroid really proves that here with this model. The beautiful sculpt, clean colors, cutesy chibi aesthetic, great posability, and variety of weapons and accessories all come together to form a great collector's item for fans of the Okami series. There isn't much in the way of Okami merchandise, so it's always nice to see new ones, especially if they're produced by bigger companies with a higher standard for quality. Overall, this is a great model, and I can't think of many things I dislike about it. However, I think it would have been cool if there was maybe one more head option to go along with this set. Maybe a head with a sleeping face to go along with the ability to make Ami look as if she were laying down. Besides that though, I think that this is a very worthy figure for any Okami fans out there, especially if you don't mind the chibi aesthetic. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. There will certainly be more unboxings and reviews coming in the future, especially with more Okami stuff as they release. So I hope you stay tuned for that, but until then, I hope you have a good night or good day depending on where you are, and I will see you all later.